Hi, I'm Henry Gregory, and this is our Prokaryotic Translation Extra Credit Project. Bang, bang. Hi, I'm Rohan Farik. I'm Serena Mott. And I'm Mahadi. Hello. So today I'll be talking about the uh, formation of the initiation complex on the trip operon for prokaryotic translation. So the first thing that happens is the uh, anti shan Dagoner sequence recognizes the um, shan Dagoner sequence on the 5' non-translated region of the mRNA. Next, the initiation factor 3 comes in and then binds to the P site. This ensures the 30S subunit and the 50S subunit of the ribosomes don't bind prematurely. Next, the initiation factor 1 comes and binds to the A site, and this stimulates initiation factors 3 and initiation factor 2. The next thing that happens is, actually, next, the IF2 bound to GTP and FMET, tRNA FMET, bind to the complex. And lastly, the complex combines with the 50S subunit and the GTP, which is bound on IF2, gets hydrolyzed and all three of the initiation factors leave. And this completes the formation of the initiation complex. The next step in translation after initiation is elongation. That begins when EFTU bound to GTP brings in the second amino acid, acyl tRNA. Here, the second amino acyl brings in lysine. So after, once GTP is hydrolyzed, EFTU and the GTP con complex leaves. The next step is the formation of the first peptide bond. The FMAT from the P site goes to the A site and is joined together by peptidyl transferase. Just like that. So this results in an uncharged tRNA in the P site. The third step in elongation is translocation of the deacylated tRNA to the A site. This requires EFG and GTP hydrolysis. As you can see, the dipeptidyl tRNA has moved from the A site to the P site, and the deacylated tRNA from the P site has moved to the E site. Now a new peptidyl tRNA will come in. This one is alanine, and this one moves into the A site. The final step in elongation is when the deacylated tRNA leaves the E site. We're talking about attenuation, which is a regulation process for transcription and translation. So the whole process of attenuation responds to differing levels of the amino acids. So this involves the trip leader peptide sequence of the trip operon, which is right here. We also have a second sequence a third sequence, and a fourth sequence. In the first sequence, which is also known as a leader peptide sequence, we have two trip codons which play a key in the regulation process of attenuation. When the levels of the tryptophan are extremely high, the ribosome will not stall at these two codons. However, when tryptophan levels are extremely low, the ribosome will stall at these two codons. Sequences 2 and 3 are complementary and will form a secondary structure which would prevent attenuation from occurring. Sequences 3 and 4 are also complementary and will bind to form a secondary structure involving a GC hairpin followed by a poly U, which is where the site of attenuation is. In prokaryotes, transcription and translation are coupled together. Uh, in this case, the tryptophan levels are high. The ribosome can quickly translate the leader and block sequence 2 before it can form a hairpin with sequence 3. This makes sequence 3 and 4 pair and form a row independent like terminator, and transcription is attenuated. RNA polymerase goes down the DNA, forming mRNA, and once that occurs, the ribosome is going to attach to the mRNA and start translating. So it'll translate at high tryptophan levels the leader peptide very quickly um, and 
So the ribosome will move down to sequence two, not letting the two and three form a hairpin structure. This occurs when the RNA polymerase um, can finish transcribing the mRNA and the sequence three and four form an attenuator structure shown here. When concentrations of tryptophan are low, the ribosome stalls at the two trip codons in the leader peptide. This, occur this allows for sequence two to freely pair with the newly transcribed sequence three and transcription can continue and not attenuate. During low tryptophan levels, the ribosome stalls at the two tryptophan codons in the leader peptide. This allows sequences two and three to freely pair with the newly transcribed sequence three, allowing for transcription to continue and attenuation to not occur.